My topic today is actually defending the authoritarian re uh, regime, the rise of voluntary 50 centers in Chinese cyberspace. Okay. Um, so, first of all, my research question. Okay. Um, we all know that the Chinese government actually hired online commentators, which is popularly known as, you know, uh, 50 centers or Wu uh, Mao to produce kind of favorable commentary and uh, discourse towards the government. And it actually triggers huge pen, um, um, backfire that actually invites criticism towards the government. So the label of 50 centers has become a very disgraceful label. So it's actually interesting for me when I'm doing this project to find some people online call themselves voluntary 50 centers. Um, so-called or um, So why? Okay, so this question actually, um, I'm going to talk briefly about, you know, the, um, the, the dominant perspectives towards internet politics in general and um, political expressions online in specific. Uh, and then before I go into the part about voluntary 50 cents, how they uh, acquire their identity and how they actually, uh, what their raptures there. Um, and then before concluding. So basically the dominant discourse or, or framing about internet politics, um, which is a straw man of course, um, um, is about the freedom struggle uh, framing, which basically looks more at the empowering impact of the internet um, and then when it comes to online expressions, it's basically a kind of cat and mouse censorship game, right? As we see here, this uh, slides demonstrate this kind of uh, perspective vividly. You have the netizens in the middle surrounded by all those government agencies that are trying to kind of restrict what uh, netizens can do online, and the netizens are fighting back. Okay. So another, actually, alternative perspective is that actually views the internet as a fragmented space. So um, there are different communities online, have different values. Um, along this line, um, we see public uh, opinion or public expression online as kind of a popular opinion engineering process. Okay, so here is a picture that shows this perspective. You have. Uh, netizens falling into different camps, championing different ideas, and fighting with each other with some people here watching. Okay, so um, of course, in terms of public opinion engineering, we know who are the actors, right? Of course, the state is there. At the very beginning, we mentioned that there are 50 centers. So they are engaging in astroturfing, pretending that they are just common netizens. At the same time, there are also those kind of um, 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 other non-state actors, mo notably the dissident groups. Okay, um, um, I don't have time to go into all the stories, and so, okay, so I'm highlighting those. It's like um, people realize that uh, online expression is subject to manipulation, and that huge anxiety drives a lot of the kind of. Um, um, activities uh, of online uh, of netizens. Um, most notably is actually the labeling war, right? Um, so you have, you know, um, especially when those kind of netizens will produce some pro-government, somewhat pro-government or even neutral uh, opinions that are so frequently being labeled as 50 centers, um, they sometimes kind of start to acquire or adapt their identity. They um, take the kind of, you know, the 50 centers to show that their opponents um, are actually so counterproductive. And at the same time, they actually kind of um, add the term voluntary to show that they are not truly actually state agents. And that, uh, considering that um, in online expressions, the dominant um, discourse is actually criticizing the government. So that gives them a sense of heroism. So they are doing something great, fighting against the, the dominance. Okay, so um, I also want to highlight that actually um, it's not only kind of the labeling wars that actually gives people this identity, it's also the amicable interactions among li like-minded uh, netizens. I'm going to discuss more about this in this part. Okay, 
So when voluntary 50 centers gain their identity, um, they also engage in a very uh, a series of kind of uh, online activities that defend, uh, that helps kind of construct, consolidate um, their identity, which a by byproduct is that they produce a kind of um, uh, uh, discourse that's generally pro-regime. Okay, so what they do, they also engage in labeling wars. And what are the, these are the, a few labels that they gave to other netizens. You see that uh, US Sands or Net Spies, Dog Food Party or kind of road leading party are, all have a strong nationalistic element. So that's what they identify their I, I, enemies. In that sense, that's a reflection of their own nationalistic stance. So they also engage in face slapping. Um, it's basically kind of, um, directly confrontation uh, with those who have a different opinion with them um, by highlighting the logic incongruence, discrepancy, or the factual errors. So one of those kind of example I gave, so like, you know, after the uh, Wenchuan earthquake in China, a lot of people criticizing the government for not being able to forecast uh, the earthquake, which is basically a lot of people don't think it's possible. So when the same, when a earthquake shook Japan um, in 2011, I guess. And then there are people, kind of those voluntary uh, 50 cents started to say, okay, those who said um, you can predict uh, uh, um, earthquakes uh, or forecast earthquakes, I'm here to slap in your face. So that kind of thing. And then crosstalks. Crosstalk is actually a traditional you know, Chinese linguistic art where people use a lot of irony, parody um, uh, to kind of, okay, I have to cut shot. So, so um, voluntary 50 cents also do this. It's like after the earthquake that shook uh, uh, Washington and earthquake. Um, 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 so there are some netizens on forums calling say, this is a sign showing that the heaven condemns CCP. Okay, obviously that's not relevant to CCP because the earthquake happens here in the US, right? But why it is actually uh, used? It's because Falun Gong users actually used that slogan to condemn uh, the regime um, after the Wenchuan earthquake and a, 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 a series of other natural disasters. So they are using that in an ironic sense. And also the favorite game of those voluntary 50 cents is actually fishing. It's a collective action which involves a series of uh, 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 steps, um, fabricate and then spread and then kind of uh, to hook up those who actually believe. It takes advantage of people uh, who tend to believe what they want to believe, okay? So I just have time to uh, have one case. It's like this is a picture showing um, um, actually create, fabricated by, by one voluntary 50 center actually um, um, saying that it's a recipe, um, recipe by Mao Zedong receiving 350 million gold rubles from the common term, which is, isn't true. Uh, and then you see that there are a few signs that are the target audience of them. So it's actually kind of the KMT fans um, or those kind of truth discovery party, what they call. And then that kind of material was actually spread to the forum of the target audience. Somebody did a kind of bad thing. They hide this line. And then um, a lot of people got hooked up, taking that as a kind of evidence showing that, OK, this is a newfound evidence of, of the inglorious history of CCP, who founded by the foreign you know, force. And then the climax of the story is that actually one AMA student in party history cited this in his thesis and then got expelled from the program. So um, this is another case when the voluntary 50 cents actually kind of, you know, resort to the kind of the common shared values, norms. Um, we don't have time to go into details, but we can discuss this later. So, Basically, I think um, voluntary 15 cents, the rep tours are actually kind of very, not only in terms of the confrontation, uh, degree of confrontation, but also in terms of the kind of the persuasive power. Some of them actually emphasize facts, rationality, 
um, when you actually talk about you know um, uh, face slapping, right, and also normative and emotional power. Um, I want to highlight that the voluntary fifty cents are are a minority, but at the same time they are building up their community. Um, they kind of you know um, also reach out the the form that it, they actually base building up a larger co community. They also extend to real life. Um, they kind of exchange Q QQ numbers, um, creating QQ groups, uh, exchange phone numbers, and visit each other, actually. Um, they also kind of, there is also a trend that some of the people are actually becoming more pro proactive instead of just kind of a uh, responsive defense. Um, this is kind of the APRO media is actually a, a, a case. Uh, APRO media is actually shut down um, uh, in the recent um, so tentative conclusions, it's pretty obvious here, right? So um, Chinese cyberspace is more pluralized and, uh, than currently depicted. And breaking down the state control doesn't necessarily mean that there is going to be a public sphere emerging out of that. Uh, it might lead to balkanized public. But at the very end, I want to add a disclaimer that um, my research doesn't actually endorse any of those kind of online activities by those guys, and I not necessarily agree with them. But I want to highlight that um, it's too easy for us actually to dismiss them as simply being brainwashed or, um, or kind of have vested interest in the regime. But rather, um, they have a reason behind. Okay, so thank you, Vero.